In the previous video, we carried out some calculations involving a parallel flow heat exchanger. And in this video, we've fixed a number of parameters, except this time we're going to reconfigure the same heat exchanger as a counter flow heat exchanger. And we're going to calculate the required length of heat exchanger tube in order to achieve the same rate of heat transfer. So from the previous video, we calculated a number of parameters. First of all, we calculated the rate of heat transfer for our parallel flow heat exchanger, and we found that to be 2,448 watts. And we also calculated our overall effective heat transfer coefficient U as 293.333. And that value of U is basically a combination of the two surface heat transfer coefficients in the bottom left hand corner, H1 and H2. Now the difference between a parallel flow and a counter flow heat exchanger, as we can see from our diagram in the top left hand corner, is that in the counter flow heat exchanger, the two fluids are actually traveling in the opposite directions to each other. So we have the hot fluid traveling from left to right, and we have the cold fluid traveling from right to left. Now we're going to use the same temperatures, so the inlet temperature of the hot fluid is 75 degrees C, and its outlet temperature is 40 degrees C. And we've got the same temperatures for our cold fluid. The cold fluid enters at 15 degrees C and it exits at 35 degrees C. The only difference is the two fluids are now traveling in different directions. So let's begin by sketching the temperature profile for our hot and our cold fluid. We can then determine delta T O, the difference between the outlet temperatures of the fluids, delta T I, the difference between the inlet temperatures of the two fluids, and then we can go on and calculate our log mean temperature difference. So first of all, we have our hot fluid, and our hot fluid is entering the heat exchanger at 75 degrees C, and then it's exiting the heat exchanger at 40 degrees C. So in actual fact, the hot fluid is unchanged from our previous example. Where the difference lies is on the left-hand side of our heat exchanger, our cold fluid is at 35 degrees C, and on the right hand side of our heat exchanger, the temperature of the cold fluid is at 15 degrees C. So we end up with a different profile. And in actual fact, the temperature difference between the two fluids remains much more consistent. As we can see here, the distance between the two lines is very similar throughout the heat exchanger. And this tends to improve the efficiency of the heat exchanger and allow for the heat to travel more efficiently, as hopefully we'll see when we carry out our calculations. So next, we need to determine delta T O and delta T I. Now I'm going to label delta T O on my right hand side here, and I'm going to label delta T I on the left hand side. Now, if you choose to label those the other way around, then you're going to arrive at exactly the same answer when you come to calculate the log mean temperature difference. So this is somewhat arbitrary. We're either looking at the outlet and inlet temperatures for the hot fluid or the cold fluid, but by switching those values, we're going to arrive at exactly the same answer. So if we look at delta T O, as we've sketched it there then, delta T O is T2 for the hot fluid, 40, minus T1 for the cold fluid, 15, which gives us a value of 25 degrees C. We can repeat for delta T I on the left hand side. We can see that T1 for the hot fluid is 75 degrees C and T2 for the cold fluid is 35 degrees C, giving us a delta T I value of 40 degrees C. So next we can calculate our log mean temperature difference. Our log mean temperature difference is delta T O 25 minus delta T I 40 divided by the natural log of delta T O 25 over delta T I 40, giving us a log mean temperature difference equal to 31.915. And hopefully you recall from the previous video, the log mean temperature difference was actually lower when we had a parallel flow heat exchanger. So here for the counter flow heat exchanger, we have a higher log mean temperature difference. Now, as we're looking to calculate the length of the tube in contact between the two fluids, we first of all need to calculate the contact area A. Now, as we can see, we have a value for thigh of 2448. We have a value for U 
of 293.333 and we have a value for our log mean temperature difference. Therefore, we can calculate the area using the following formula. Area equals thigh divided by U times LMTD. And all I've done there is rearrange the formula at the top of the page by dividing each side by U and dividing each side by log mean temperature difference. So the required contact area for our counterflow heat exchanger is going to be 2448 divided by the U value 293.333 times the log mean temperature difference 31.915 which comes out to be 0 0.2615 to four decimal places. And that's measured in meter squared. So now we have our required area, we're going to clear some space and we're going to calculate the equivalent length of counterflow heat exchanger when compared to the previously evaluated parallel flow heat exchanger. So in our previous video, we imagined taking our heat exchanger tube and cutting it along one side so that we could open it flat into a rectangle. And what we showed there was that the contact surface area here between the two fluids could be calculated using the formula 2 pi r times the length. So if area equals 2 pi r times the length, and we have values for area, 0 0.2615, and we can find our value of radius because we know that the diameter is 8 millimeters, then we can use that formula in order to calculate the length of the heat exchanger tube. Rearranging for L, we get L equals area divided by 2 pi r. So next let's plug in some values. The area is 0 0.2615. We're dividing that by 2 pi times the radius. Well, we have a diameter of tube of 8 millimetres, meaning we have a radius of 4 millimetres. 4 millimetres in metres is 0 0.004. Plugging those values into the calculator gives us a length of heat exchanger tube equal to 10.40 metres. Now recall that the length of the parallel flow heat exchanger needed to be 15 metres in order to achieve the same rate of heat transfer. So what we've shown here is that the counter flow heat exchanger actually improves the rate of heat transfer and hence the length of the heat exchanger tube can be reduced which would in turn decrease the size of the heat exchanger itself.